Modern Funner here. Today I'm down in my basement. I've got some problems with my water. The pressure keeps dropping way too low and the pump doesn't kick on in time. So today I'm going to be putting in a new regulator switch. The switch that I've got on there right now, it only has the one screw here with the, the bigger spring and it doesn't have this other adjuster here. I need to have that small one on here so that I can adjust the pressure a little bit differently and I'll show you how to do that once I get started. That's the pressure that we have in the kitchen here and the pump hasn't even kicked on yet. So I'm going to leave this running and I'm going to go into the bathroom and I'm going to flush the toilet. And then I'm going to go to, back into the basement and see at what pressure the pump kicks back on. So I'm back in the basement now and just waiting for the gauge to go back down. It's oh, kicked on at about 22 pounds. Shut it off right there. We have a switch. Whoever put that in, put it in backwards. So uh, I marked it on there off. And I don't want this to build up too much pressure again. I know that the maximum pressure on this pump is 40 psi, so that's going to be my cutoff. And hopefully I can get it to turn on quicker so that the pressure doesn't have to drop so far. So this is a jet pump and this is the type of pump that you use for a sand point. Always had good water here with us. So I've already shut the power off right here. I'm going to take the cover off. got my electrical tester here I'm just gonna make sure that there is no power here All right, no light on there the problem with this switch it doesn't have a, a secondary adjustment on it okay so there's a small screw right here that holds this clamp in place and yours might be different comes out like so. The new switch that I'm putting in is a little bit different. This one is probably a little more heavy duty than the one that I've already got in there. It has the big screw right there to adjust the cut in pressure and the cut out pressure. It'll adjust both. You can adjust the cut out pressure on this one without adjusting the cut in pressure on this one. You need to take note of where your wires are going. Um, right here has the two terminal ends and that goes to your motor. Um, I don't know if you can see it on this here it says motor on this side and line on this side. So the tabs go to the motor. Now this other one the tabs are both in the middle and the two other lines are on the outside so that's what the diagram shows here if you can see where it says where the M is it has the two in the middle and then the other ones are on the outside I'm gonna take all the wires off now um, the white one here according to the diagram is line 2 so I'm gonna keep that in mind line 2 and the black one on the other side is line 1 that's the two main wires off and the other two are just held in by clips okay so I've pulled these two off 
Um, I don't know if it makes a difference which wire goes with what, but uh, you can see one has got some corrosion on it and the other one doesn't. The corroded one is going on with the black wire and the non-corroded one is going on with the white wire. That's how I can remember this. And then up underneath here is the ground wire. Or at least there should be. Sometimes it's easier just to take the whole screw out, especially if you're taking something off. And there we go. There's a flat nut down in here. And usually they're not too tight, but of course I put this one on, so it's probably a little tighter than it needs to be. I'll go get a hammer. Now the nut that I'm talking about on the inside is a jagged nut like this. And what you need to do is hammer on, the, on these edges here to turn it, to loosen it. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, now that part will come off. Alright, now the only thing left holding it on here is this line, and I hope you can see it well enough there. Uh, a lot of times this is just a plastic line right in here, but I put a copper one in. I had some problems with the plastic one, so I put that in. And I believe there's going to be pressure there. Not sure exactly how much pressure is going to be in here if the whole tank is going to want to empty or. Okay. I'm going to have to let all the pressure out of the taps first. Okay, so I've got all the pressure out of the taps now. It's just bubbling some air, and it's done. So this is the line that I'm taking off. Like I said, a lot of times it's just a plastic line. Now the pressure should be gone out of there. It's all out of the taps. At least the majority is gone. For a bit. So what I've got is these fittings right here and I'm going to have to fit that into this other one right here. So I've just got some uh, pipe sealant with Teflon. You could use tape or something like this. This is just a little easier. Alright, there was a fitting in here before and I took that out, I had to chisel it out of there but I got it out. I'm going to put these wires through, those are the motor wires. Put that on there, replace the nut again. You want the curved side out. Okay, I'm just going to leave that loose for now. And I'm going to reattach this copper line on here. Try and get the same angle as what I had here before. Just to, so I don't have to bend the line all over the place. This is a compression fitting, so you don't need any of that goop on here. Just make sure you get it 
on there straight. Okay, got that tight. And that kind of holds that in place there. I'm just going to tighten this up. Doesn't need to be overly tight. I had to stop what I was doing there for a minute because I need to read something off of the lid from the switch. And getting to be just that age where I've had to pick up some of these dollar store glasses just so I can see. So now that I got my glasses, I'm looking back at this uh, instructions in here. In, at the diagram and it says, I remember the black wire was on the left so that one says line one and I look at the instructions on the new box and line one is the top one here so the black would go to the top and I remember the corroded one went with the black so that goes on the same side like I said, I don't know if that makes a difference, but I just kept track just in case. I've already put my ground screw down in here. Attached the bare wire, the ground wire down into here. Okay, I'm going to do this white wire first because it's down at the bottom. And I've got a nice little loop in there. It should fit in there. This has a little hook right there that has to hook on the inside. And then you bring it around like that. And tighten it onto the wire there. So that just keeps it from pulling out. Alright. Just make sure all the wires are tucked in there so that you don't get it hooked in the cover. She should be all ready to turn on now. Watch her go. Okay, so I'll just be careful around the wires there. Right now it's up at about 15 PSI. And I'm gonna go upstairs and gonna let out some of the pressure, well, some of the air out of the taps. I'm going to do that before this pump decides to shut off. And just by the kitchen sink. And there's a little bit of pressure there, but I'm going to let it run here for a little while. Some air is probably going to come out. Okay, now just as I shut it off, a bunch of air started coming out. So I'm going to leave that running for a little bit just on cold. Okay, and here's the bathroom. And I'm going to flush the toilet and we'll see how much air comes out of here. I don't seem to be getting any more air bubbles out of here, so I'm going to go shut everything off. Let the pump finish running. Well, this pump isn't capable of doing any more than 40 PSI with that old tank there, so I'm going to start turning this small screw there counterclockwise and get on the other camera. Careful of the wires there. So counterclockwise is going to make it shut off. Huh. All right, right there. 
that's where it needs to be. Now I'm just going to see where the cut-in pressure is going to start at. I'm going to go and turn the taps on again. Flush the toilet a few times and let the pressure run down and I want to see when it's going to start up. And I want this thing turning on at about 30 PSI already so I'm going to readjust the black screw right there. I better do it before the pressure gets too low. turned on at about 27 PSI. Let's see how that works. Uh, the adjustment that I just did on the black screw, it shouldn't affect the cutoff pressure. It should still be at 40 PSI, so I'm just going to make sure that that's what it is. So now that I readjusted it, it uh, shut off at 35 PSI. That's exactly what I didn't want. Um, so I'm just going to have to readjust it on that screw again. I should have set the black screw first. Come on, trial and error. I just shut the camera off and what I was doing here was I turned this clockwise until it turned back on again. And I'm going to make sure that it took off at 40 PSI this time again. So it's just about up to the 40 PSI again. I'm hoping it's going to shut off in here pretty soon. Yeah, probably about as high as it's going to get right there. Getting right on the 40 mark. Now I'm going to readjust this again. I just turned it enough that it would turn on. Now I'm going to lower it a little bit, very slowly. And there we go. So the cutoff is set at about 40 psi i'm gonna go run some water again and i'm gonna see where the cut in pressure is hopefully we got a happy medium here i didn't even quite have enough time to make it down here and it was turning back on so at about 32 psi it starts to kick on and that's just perfect pump's gonna run a little more often but it'll keep the pressure up and when it does run it's not gonna run for such a long period of time and it's probably better for the pump it doesn't get so hot because it won't be running for so long. Just going to wait for it to shut off and check the pressure again. Make sure this is all good and I'll put the cap on. Okay, it shut off nicely at 40 PSI again, so I'm just going to put the cap on. This one's got a bit of a different one. It has a tab on the top here. have to hook that tab in and tighten that screw down in the bottom here. So, hope you learned something. Subscribe if you like and like if you like. She be. Good as new. Green and blue. Good as new. Thanks for watching.